Today, in this video, we're going to be talking about dielectric grease, bulb grease, electrical lube, and silicon paste products which are used on your typical car or truck. There's a lot of misinformation about these products on the internet. Dielectric grease. It conducts electricity really well. So this video is aimed to clear up the confusion, but also shows you how to apply the product yourself. We're going to be showing what to use it on, what not to use it on, when you should and shouldn't use it, and where exactly to use it, and everything in between. So let's get going. Okay, so there's two things you need to know about dielectric grease. Number one is dielectric grease prevents oxidation. This is where rust tends to build up. This can cause poor or intermittent electrical connections. And the second thing you need to know about dielectric grease is it's an insulator. This means it does not conduct electricity. So you may be asking yourself, do I use dielectric grease or don't I use it? The guy at AutoZone sold me a packet of this stuff with my light bulbs and told me to rub it all over the bulb's terminals to prevent oxidation. But why would I do that if this is an insulator? Wouldn't that cause electrical issues? Like anything else, putting dielectric grease on electrical connection should be done in moderation. Don't empty a whole packet into an electrical socket, then squeeze the connector on. Most folks will tell you that the excess grease will push itself out and then you can wipe it off and the electrical contacts will make a good connection due to the pressure of the connection, the pressure of the fitting. But the thing to note is not all connectors are made the same. If a connector becomes loose, then you would have current trying to pass through an insulator. This creates heat as a byproduct, and when heat is generated, this could potentially cause a fire, or more likely just start melting wire insulation. And then you may have an ongoing issue with contacts shorting out. Okay, so does this mean I shouldn't use dielectric grease? Well, again, it does depend. There are some parts of this logic here, which is where the argument sort of stems from. The first part is uh, old heads. They would use a lot of older vehicles, you know, back in the day where many electrical connectors didn't have modern strong sealing gaskets and various things to protect electrical connections, protect them from rain, dirt, debris, mud, and all those different things. Having some dielectric grease in there would protect the connection, which is quite common in headlight bulbs and taillight bulbs and things like that. And the other part of this logic is you would use it if you live in a harsh environment. So it does depend on what kind of environment you live in and also where you drive your vehicle as well. So you will find instances of people opening almost every electrical connection they can find and shoving some dielectric grease in there. And again, some people may need to do this depending on the environment you drive your car in. But other people kind of watch this on the internet and decide to do it for themselves as well. So if you've had a chance to look around various vehicles, you may notice that many electrical connections in modern vehicles are pre-greased out of the factory, but only in certain locations. You may find grease in interior lighting, tail lights, headlights. If you have a, a tow hitch electrical connection, there may be grease on there, battery posts, and various other things. However, what you will find is a lot of electrical connections don't have grease. So this is where the manufacturer may know best, based on how the car or truck is constructed and which certain electrical connections are more exposed to the environment and rain and such. So I'm playing devil's advocate here, but the main key is moderation. Moderation for your environment, moderation for your usage. Where do you take the car? Where do you take the truck? What roads do you drive on? What environment do you live in? You want to prevent oxidation, but you do not want to place a voluntary insulator between two items which need to conduct. So at the start of the video, you talked about dielectric grease, silicon paste, bulb grease, electrical lube. Well, they're almost one and the same, but not quite. It does depend what additives and products in certain things you may buy. A typical tube of dielectric grease that you might buy is a form of silicone paste. Silicone is the main ingredient. Dielectric is more like the usage. If the product states dielectric grease, then you should be fine. If the product states silicone grease or silicone paste, then always check the ingredients or the usage as not all products are made the same. 
Some products contain additives, but some products may just contain thickening agents. I prefer this one, silicone paste, because I can use it on electrical components, but I can also use it as a brake lubricant. It's a really great product. So on here you can see it specifically says waterproof, dielectric grease, and also on the fine print or even on the product website, you can see various usages for this. So it's a really an all-star product. It's uh, temperature insensitive and I use this pretty much like a dielectric grease. So it's odorless, non-volatile, works in extreme temperatures, resistant to moisture, air, acid and alkalis. But where and when is it good to use it? Okay, so instance number one, in modern vehicles, assuming you are using the vehicle under normal circumstances, if an electrical connector has a special gasket or rubber gasket or sealant which protects the connection, then I would just leave it alone. The chances are, if this connection did require dielectric grease, it would probably be already pre-greased out of the factory. Otherwise, the gasket sealing this connection will do a good job by itself. However, if the gasket starts cracking, the car becomes old, then you may want to revisit this and apply some dielectric grease to protect the, the connection. Instance number two, if you have an electrical trailer socket for towing, then dielectric grease is very good on there as this electrical connection is constantly exposed to external elements. It's a very good application for dielectric grease. You can use dielectric grease or silicone paste on battery terminals. So headlight or taillight bulbs or maybe even interior bulbs as well, especially if you're having pre-existing issues. It's likely these are pre-greased out of the factory, but it's something good to check, especially if you live in a harsh environment. So perhaps a controversial one is spark plug boots and coils. You may use a very thin layer on spark plug boots or coils if you have an existing issue and this will prevent arcing. However, spark plug coils and boots, modern ones anyway, are designed to prevent arcing very well. That's why they're made of this material. Think about it, you're shoving an insulator voluntarily up inside a spark plug boot or coil. You're pretty much almost trying to sever the connection to the spark plug. This is going to cause some misfires, engine codes and all different problems. I just really don't think it is worth it. If you have a problem with the boot or coil, just replace it with a new one. I'm pretty sure this one's sort of handed down from sort of the older generation of vehicles anyway. And lastly, if you live or use the vehicle in a harsh environment or you have an older vehicle, then you may consider many other options. I would always begin with the most important connections, then go from there. For example, the connection to the alternator would be a good starting point. But if you have a nicely maintained modern vehicle, then I'm pretty much going to leave it to tail light and headlight bulbs, battery terminals, and things of that nature. Things which are generally exposed to harsh environments. Okay, so how do I apply this stuff? Always remember, dielectric grease should not be applied to mating surfaces where a connection is not tight enough to displace it. So always remember to apply this in solid connections. You push the connection together based on friction. It should push the dielectric grease out of the way. Secondly, don't use too much lube as it attracts dirt and debris. This can cause a lot of problems and maybe more problems than you originally started with. Now, if you have an electrical trailer socket, I highly recommend using dielectric grease. I would apply a thin coat on the terminals. These are always exposed to harsh environments. You can easily check the socket, access it. It's not always in use, it's maintainable, and you can check and apply this frequently. On battery terminals, always make the connection on the battery first. Don't put dielectric grease inside the ring or on the post directly. Make sure you snug these rings right down on these battery stumps and then apply the lube second. Your battery is crucial for vehicle operations. C cables should be snug on the battery posts, giving a good clean connection. We really don't want to apply an insulator between the ring and the post. It just really does not make sense. But we do want to protect both of these 
from the harsh weather conditions, preventing oxidation. For headlight or taillight bulbs or interior bulbs or anything like that, if you're already having some issues, apply a thin coat to the terminals, very thin coat. We don't need to dollop it on just because we have a, a packet from AutoZone. We don't need to all shove it in there. Those little packets can, you know, last multiple months, for example. Just a very, very thin coat. Once you've applied the thin coat, insert the bulb into the socket and wipe away any excess grease which is pushed out afterwards. Okay, so to summarize the video, dielectric grease has its uses. Just because we have a tub, it doesn't mean we should coat every single connector with it. Just like we shouldn't coat every single nut and bolt with anti-seize or Loctite, there's always a purpose, a reason, a requirement and a use. The usage is individual. There's no right or wrong answer. I hope you learned something new about dielectric grease. Leave a comment below if you have any questions or queries or any past experiences with using dielectric grease or silicon paste. If you ever get caught up in an internet argument, then just show them this video. It will teach them everything they need to know and hopefully we can bust a lot of these misconceptions together. Okay, stay tuned for another video coming soon. Goodbye.